when we do the odd uh, Q&A or we do a supporters event, there's one story that I really love and I'd like you to just take all these fans who are here tonight, particularly Mr Merritt, down memory lane when you were coming back from an injury and uh, the lovely... No, I'll, I'm sorry, but I can't say this story because they all were swearing at me. <laughs> and we've got ladies and kids in the room, and so I can't tell that story. L ladies, do you mind if he tells the story? <laughs> okay, then. You've had permission from the ladies, Rob. Uh, this is a good okay. one. Okay. They were a very good team, Malta. You've been drinking. That's why. <laughs> 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 well, you wouldn't be paying anyway. <laughs> we were playing marine away, like big thug scousers. <laughs> and so I'm going, yeah, this is going to be great. Two years ago this week, the world's oldest Manchester United supporters club was celebrating its 60th anniversary. And those celebrations kicked off with a gala dinner at Hotel Football. In this exclusive film, we're going to be sharing some footage for the very first time. Highlights that didn't quite make the official feature-length documentary, but highlights all the same. A memorable evening in the presence of some great Manchester United heroes. Before I cut to the film, please subscribe to this channel, like the video and ring that bell if you want to be alerted when we publish more behind-the-scenes footage. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy what's coming up. Further ado, can we just say, gentlemen, on behalf of the Malta Supporters Club, we're absolutely delighted to welcome you. Give them a big Maltese welcome, ladies and gentlemen. 60 years, part of the family, part of the United congregation. Just to get things underway, Gary, you've been involved, we saw it there for many, many years. Tell us about your journey with these fantastic people and the Malta Supporters Club. How did it all start? What was the original connection? Um, the original connection was that um, myself, Chris Casper, Ben Thornley, we're not really sat, there he is, uh, and David Beckham went over there uh, in 1993, and at the time we were youth team players, and the two first team players were Ryan Giggs and Paul Ince. Oh. And I'd never had a drink in my life, actually, <laughs> until that trip. You've but made then. up for it since. <laughs> you blaming me, or is <laughs> uh, We went out on the first night, and uh, who were you with at the time? I can't remember who was it. Girlfriend, wasn't it? Move on. <laughs> <laughs> so Ryan came out with us, took us out. It's the first ever shot of tequila I'd ever had. F first ever pint of woodpecker. And you played for 20 years. <laughs> And to be fair, I had, the mo had the most incredible time and then went back every year since and just absolutely loved the place. It was more the people. Um, I think everybody who's all the players in here tonight who have obviously been over there uh, will, will say that the place is wonderful, the sun is wonderful, but the people are just so warm. They love um, Manchester United, but they love us as people as well, not just because we play for the club. And I think that's the most important thing. And they've been absolutely great supporters of all of us over the years. So... Thank you to all of you that are here tonight. You deserve it. Ryan, we've got, to, um, we've got to ask you, as Gary said, Dan, you were one of the sort of elder statesmen, if you like, going over to Malta. Your first thoughts on Malta? No, exactly what Gary said. Um, I didn't know what to expect. And um, obviously we knew that um, about the supporters club and the, the love for Manchester United, but it wasn't until we went over there and we had the dinners and just, I mean, it was, first of all, it was a beautiful place. But just the welcome that we got and, um, you know, the first time that we went to Joe Madani's um, garage. It was a garage then, wasn't it? And it was just, wow. It was like unbelievable. Everything, 
in there was just Manchester United Associated. And um, like Gary said, it was just the people, really, that we just become friends for life with and just the welcome that we got, how we got looked after. And, um, yeah, just like Gary, I'd been I've been back many times. But see, um, it's interesting because we know that you've not got the same connection, but uh, I have been informed, or we've been informed tonight, that you're, uh, this is the official title, by the way, uh, you're an adopted son of Malta. How pleasing is that, Butty? It's very nice to follow these two, uh, <laughs> the adopted son. Uh, I, I went a bit later than these because obviously I had a life and I had some of my own friends that I went out with. <laughs> <laughs> But no, when I went there, was I can't remember the date I went, but we went with the team and uh, Wes was there and a few other lads and we went there and uh, everything that they echoed was, was, was there for us all to see. It was a really great place, beautiful place to go. Uh, and again, the people were really welcoming and like Ryan just said, then it's a it's thing that you connection that you have for life and not only with us, but the families, your, your, your parents, your, your, you know, your, your cousins, your brothers, they all are welcome over there. And every time you go there from now, it's, it's, been, it's been amazing. But like you said, I was late going there, but... I wish I'd have gone and seen Gary's first tequila shot. <laughs> <laughs> now, Gary, listen, um, obviously, Giggs has just referred to it there, the, the, the garage or, or the museum or all the, the collection. I mean, what was that like? Because, I mean, you're a massive Manchester United fan. To go over there and see the sort of the, the fanaticism that's over there with all the collection and everything. Tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, Joe, um, I don't know if any of you have not been to Joe's, but you need to go over to Malta to see Joe's museum. It's absolutely incredible. It's a shrine to Manchester United. He's got things that you would never even imagine. Uh, and the welcome that we got in those early days from Joe, where's Joe Glanville? Joe Glanville, from John Buttigieg, from Joe Tedesco, from Randolph Mitz, he was absolutely out of this world, James Bullock, and many, many more. Uh, but Joe was the, the quiet one, but the seemed the most fanatic and never quite worked out why his nickname was Madani, but he's got a story to tell. Um, but he's got the most incredible collection and he's, um, it's worth going seeing if anybody hasn't seen it. Ryan, we went over for the um, 50th anniversary. We had that dinner over there. That was an amazing experience. What do you remember of that one, that night when you were walking into that room, hundreds of Maltese Manchester United supporters in that room? Yeah, well, first of all, the location was amazing. I mean, it was just one of the best... Well, one of the best dinners and settings that I've ever seen in my life. It was, first, first of all, it was amazing. But then, you know, what an achievement, 50 years. And obviously, we've seen a little bit of the history there. But it was just a great night. Um, and like I said before, you're meeting, and, and Nikki touched on it there. You know, the, you see the kids growing up and um, met Winston there as well, Winston Zahara, who are now um, in business with and... Um, looks after hotel football with us. We met Winston on that night. So, um, so many things um, from going over to Malta has happened, and um, the relationship that has been, the relationships that have been forged, um, like I said, for life. So, um, and even if you haven't seen certain people for six months, a year, two years, when you do see them, it's as if you know it was yesterday that you'd seen them. Brilliant, Butty. Back to you again. I mean, lovely endorsement of Malta. Fantastic country, wonderful people, as the boys have already said. But you just to turn around to football for a moment, obviously the academy, you've been very, very busy. Um, give us your overview on that and how's it been going for you personally? You're enjoying the role? Um, I think any role um, that you get at that club there for a long, long time, you were all very fortunate to be involved in it, and I'm really fortunate to be, to be involved in it still, um, any, with any job title really. So I, I stumbled upon the job, obviously, uh, three, three and a half, four years ago now, and it was some of that I was... Probably out of my comfort zone, if I'm honest. Um, come a bit too soon, um, but it's something that I couldn't turn down because I, I love the club and it's part of me. And to give back to the kids that I got a dream like we all had once um, is very special. And to still do that now, it's great. We've got some great kids that are hopefully going to get a chance now with with, with um, a different regime. Um, so yeah, it's, it's it's great for us to be. To, <laughs> it's, great, it's, great, it's great for me to see young kids coming into the um, the first team and having a chance. So that's what it's about at that club. Just to develop on that as well, and uh, thank you for being so upfront in regards to your passion and love for the club, which we all do love from the bottom of our hearts. But obviously the young boys coming through, we can look at Rashford for one and many, many others, but it must be difficult as well. You've let a few go. Deadline was uh, today. You've let a couple of the lads go. That must be difficult when it comes to that point as well. 
Um, I don't think it is, no, because I think it's about them getting a, um, a career in football and, and having the relationship with Man United for many, many years. And the, um, we're quite fortunate, be even before I got there, with people like Paul and, and Eric Harrison and Nobby Styles and Brian Kidd. They brought so many players through that have, that have gone on to great careers. I mean, the Leicester City uh, Premier League winning squad had four of our academy boys in it, so that's a massive bonus for us as a club as well. And, and when you see lads that are going on, like Rush on to Shrewsbury and Matty Willis going to Crawley, to go and get a career in football and get paid for it, it's the, it's the best thing you can have because we'd all do it on a Sunday morning for free. So it's, it's amazing, really, for them. Fantastic. Thank you. I suppose this is a question for, for you two guys because you've come through the ranks. How important is it to bring that youth through the ranks for Manchester United? We know from days gone by, from the Busby Babes all the way through, how important is that youth policy at Manchester United for you guys? Uh, well, I mean, it is is very important. Um, you know, I, I think it's always with the history of the club. Um, you know, going back to obviously the Busby Babes, and um, it's something special to see one of your own come through. And even now, um, obviously, with the introduction of the last twenty odd years, MUTV, and being able to actually see the players. If you don't get to the games, you actually see them in the academy games or the reserve games, and then actually, you know, just watch the journey. And, you know, everyone's got a favourite play. He's definitely going to make it. It's just whether they do make it. But what this club does do, which more often, you know, which clubs um, don't do like this club, is, is give players a chance. Then it's up to the players. And, um, you know, it is special for a fan to see the likes of Rashford, you know, coming through. You've seen him. We've seen many players who are, who are talented, but then you need that extra mentality, um, obviously dedication. So you never know until he actually gets to the first team. But then w when it does happen, when you see the likes of Marcus coming through, um, it's special and it's you know what sets this club apart from many other clubs in the world. I guess you'll echo that, Gary, because at the end of the day, you've got to have that special talent to break through. Even though we've got talented players under the first team, you've got that extra special talent to break into that first team. Yeah, you've got to have the talent, but you've also got to have the belief from the management team that are in the club and the, the, the system. And I think that United, even in this last six or seven years when it's been difficult, there have still been players being produced. If you think that you know, Jesse Lingard, Marcus Rashford, McTominay, players like that are still coming into the first team. It's still something that the club are trying to do through even difficult times and that should be maintained. You know, when I was growing up watching the team and you think of sort of Norman coming through and players of that ilk, it's always happened, it should always continue to happen. It's one of the great values that the club have and should never be never be lost. Talk, talking of the values of the club, Gary, um, obviously every one of us here loves United. We want them to do well. We want them to win everything and win every game. What's your view on the rest of this season? What do you think United can achieve? You know, when you look at Europe and you look at the league and the top four, what in your mind can we achieve, and particularly with the change over the last eight, nine games with the, the new sort of yeah. interim manager? We now look like we've got a chance of getting in the top four, which I have to say, pre-Christmas, I didn't think was possible, which is huge positive. The turnaround's been incredible. I think it's a good reflection on Oli. I think it's a good reflection on the players, but I also think it's a bad reflection on the players as well, that they were so bad before. They still have to take responsibility for what happened. <laughs> and... And things are never as good as they seem, they're never as bad as they seem. There is a lot of talent in that squad. You think of Martial and Rashford, Lukaku, Sanchez, Mata. It's incredible, really, those types of players. Now, and all, what Oli's done is fantastic. I think the game against Tottenham a couple of weeks ago, really, where everybody thought that was his test and that was the game that really would fall down in. I thought in the first half, absolutely outstanding tactically. And, you know, for them to produce that performance against the top team was absolutely brilliant. And... I think even the other night against Burnley, um, you know, people, f we didn't win every single game under Sir Alex Ferguson. We did draw games. Uh, and actually, the idea of what happened the other night might even be more powerful than winning at home sometimes because the idea of coming back is in Manchester United's history. So I think Ollie's done an absolutely incredible job. I'm hopeful we can get into the top four. I mean, the dream would be to win a trophy and get into the top four, and you would say that would be a sensational achievement out of what's been a very difficult season. Thank you very much indeed. I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, will you please give it up for a very honest opinion and very honest questions for Ryan, Gary, and Nicky Bott. Cheers, Thank you, Gary. 
Well, um, if you thought that was good, ladies and gentlemen, there is more. <laughs> Mr. Merritt, you're going to love this. Absolutely love it. Thank you. Now going for the more mature end of our <laughs> legends that are here this evening. The more sophisticated it could be said, but then that wouldn't be us saying that, would it, Paul? No, none at all. So, um, introductions, please. First of all, would you please welcome to the stage a legend of Manchester United, Captain Marvel, Mr. Brian Robson, ladies and gentlemen. Cheers, Robbo. Hey. <laughs> you owe him. <laughs> also, when we introduce legends of the game, we'd like to introduce a gentleman, Paul. This gentleman won the European Cup in 1968. Will you please welcome to the stage Mr. Paddy Crerand. Thank you, Paddy. Welcome, Pat. Cheers, thank you. I've, 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 been, I've been abused by two people from Manchester. Hurry up. I've never hurried up in my life. <laughs> that'd that, that, be a first, David. Thank you. And uh, finally, ladies and gentlemen, we could ask many, many of the players here tonight, but I'm sure you'll appreciate there is only one king, and that is, of course, Mr. Dennis Law, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, do you move that quick when you were playing? <laughs> we'll get that in a minute, Robbo. Um, just before we begin, obviously... Everybody involved with the Malta supporters, there are many legends in the room tonight. Apologies, we can't fit you all up here. Time is not allowed, but we do acknowledge that you're in the room and thank you very much indeed. Thank you to all the legends who are here with us. Total respect. So, um, Robbo, I'd like to start with you, if you don't mind, because obviously we've had three of the finest players on the stage a few moments ago. But I know when we do the odd uh, Q&A or we do a supporters event there's one story that i really love and i'd like you to just take all these fans who are here tonight particularly mr merritt down memory lane when you were coming back from an injury and uh, the lovely no I'll, i'm sorry but i can't say this story because they all were swearing at me <laughs> and we've got ladies and kids in the room and so I can't tell that story. La ladies, do you mind if he tells the story? <laughs> okay then. You've had permission from the ladies, Rob. Uh, this is a good okay. one. Okay. So uh, anyway, so Alex, I, I'd been injured as usual. Uh, and I was coming back from the injury and so Alex had asked me, Rob, well, I think you need to play Lancashire League game, um, you know, because we're allowed two overage players in them days. And so I went, yeah, boss. I, I says, I feel as if I need a game and all that. So I knew all these young players were coming through. I'd watched them in the FA Youth Cup and everything, and they were an outstanding team. But we were playing Marine away, like big thug scousers. <laughs> and so I'm going, yeah, this is going to be great. I'm playing like these lot are 17, 18, and I'm thinking... Well, I can see me getting sent off in this game because I'm going to boot them if they start kicking the kids about. So uh, I say this to Eric Harrison when just before the game. I went, Eric, just try and calm me down. Like I says, because if they start with the young kids, you know me, I'm going to kick them back. And so anyway, Eric said, no, you just see how the game goes. So anyway, we start the game. Within 10 minutes, Scolzi is playing centre forward. There's a six foot four centre half, and he's a mensum. Right over the top, this centre half's down on the floor. So physio comes on for Marine, uh, looks over, and I'm going, Scolzi, you okay? Uh, why wouldn't I be rubble? <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay, and so anyway, the lad gets up, and anyway, we play on. So, next week, we're 2-0 up, they get a corner, and so Nev is marking the near post. And so, he goes about 10 yards away from the near post, and I'm standing in the six-yard box, and I'm going, Nev, you're going too far. Rubble. If they take a short one, I can get out there, 
if they're going to knock it in, I'll get back square on the post. Ah, okay, Nev. That's okay. <laughs> By the way, these are 17, 18. Um, England captain, Man United <laughs> captain. Uh, and like about 35-year-old. So anyway, the game's going on. And we're 4-0 up. And so I break this ball up in the middle of midfield. And I break towards the box. And this lad just brings me down right on the edge of the box. So I fall on the ball. And... So I just catch the ball. So I'm getting up. The referees give the free kick, get up with the ball, and uh, all of a sudden I hear this voice. Oh well, I take all the free kicks, Bex. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, yeah, I didn't even take free kicks at that time, even though I was 35. Here you go, Bex. Right. Anyway, he puts the ball down, bang, top corner. 5-0. <laughs> so we win five. So we won the game 5-0. And the reason why I tell this story is because these were always going to be top players, not because of just the talent, but the mentality. Yeah. When they can talk to the skipper like that, who's far older than them, they, they've just got a mentality that the winners. Yeah. And so that So as I walk up, I'm shaking the referee's hand and all that sort of thing walk across, haven't been booked, haven't been sent off or anything because I haven't had to look after these lot. <laughs> and so I have, and Eric Harrison, the coach, just goes to me, Robbo, uh, do you think they're okay? And I went, <laughs> yeah, okay, Eric, I've got it. Great story, Robbo, great introduction <laughs> to the boys. Absolutely brilliant. We've got um, another legend with it. Ladies and gentlemen, legend that is Mr. Dennis Law, the King of Old Trafford. Woo! Dennis, oh, thank you. Dennis, we've, um, we've we've got a story about you and Manchester United playing in Malta, right, uh, 1967. Yeah. You it, remember it? What is it? Short time like that? 1967. Can we remember? It? Can you remember it? Yeah, I can't remember it. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that uh, if I remember rightly. They were a very good team, Malta. You've been drinking. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> well, you wouldn't be paying anyway. <laughs> anyway, we thought, well, what a good team Malta was. Uh, the pitch was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Can was, you elaborate on that? It was the pitch. If I remember. What was it? There was not a blade of grass. I, I didn't know what it was. We went down there. We thought, well, what's this then? This is the car park. <laughs> so it was the, yeah. yeah. And that, that was the pitch. These guys who played later on haven't got a clue what they've missed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> your, memories of, your memories of Malta? Malta, yeah, it was really good. I think we played them at home. For, did we play them at home first? No, you played them away. Oh, we played away first. It was nil-nil. Nil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? And then you battered them at Old Trafford. Yeah, we, we, we did batter them, yeah. You can remember the score? 4-0. Uh, oh, 4-0, all oh, right. <laughs> was you, you, yeah, yeah, we did. And we felt very sorry for them because, you know, we're going over there, they not the best team in the world, so... And what about, I mean, the, what about the people of Malta, Dennis? The, the people of Malta are absolutely fantastic. Thinking, hopefully, that I'm going back in the summer. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> ah. Oh, yeah, yeah. OK, I don't need to say any more on that, just as long as, long as we give us a date. <laughs> I, th I think we've got the tickets booked, Dennis. You're all right. It's all sorted, no problem. Paddy, your memories of Malta, lots of great ones. Uh, share a couple with us. I remember when we arrived in the airport in Malta, I'd never been in Malta before, none of us had been in Malta before, and there was a cavalcade of cars followed us. I thought it was the police oh, because... A cavalcade. Do you know that? <laughs> that, that, means, <laughs> that means a lot of cars. I know you and I, but from... A <laughs> 
Yeah. No, but, but we, we arrived at the airport and it was amazing the support it was at the airport. It was incredible. And then, as I said, this cavalcade of cars. <laughs> <laughs> then, remember, remember, no we, we educated you jocks when you came down here. We educated you. Whoa! <laughs> I speak better English yeah, than yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but we, the, the, the followed us all the way back to the hotel. No, we, we followed us all the way back to the hotel. We went to our rooms, and every room was packed with Maltese lads. Yeah. Packed with them, yeah. bloody hell. Have you ever seen a pack of Maltesers? Yeah, yeah. That's the number that was in my room. <laughs> it was incredible in actual fact. They, they were just fanatical United fans. Yeah. Just absolutely crazy. And it's, I think it was Father Hillary was the manager then, wasn't it? That was me buggered, because yeah. I couldn't use bad language then. Yeah, well, I was going to say first. another one then, but I, I can't. But yeah, just, it, was, it was a fantastic trip. And, it was fantastic. I've been back since, and actually, for, I think I've been back another time with Nicky, Ryan Giggs, Gary Neville. Did we not go to a supporters' dinner after a game at West Ham? Yeah. Did you have the same suits as them, Paddy? Yeah, no, but they, they, they'd done a, prop co a pub crawling that. away from the airport to the bloody place we were going to. <laughs> <laughs> but I just think the support was incredible. I just, he's a fantastic lads, honestly, you're fantastic. Oh, you've done enough crawling now. <laughs> no, I'm going to crawl a bit more, but I'd love to see Martin Edwards and G David Gill. Bloody hell. Yeah, we're getting them up for their memories in a moment, oh, so I, get I'm ready, sorry. lads. <laughs> Listen, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to reminisce with these three later on. We could talk and listen to them all evening, but we just wanted to get them up for a couple of minutes. Please show your appreciation. Three legends, Robbo, the King, thank you, and Mr Paddy Curran.